to start with, this does not look like a very nice equation. We've got sine squared, we've got sine, but we've also got cos, and we've also got sine x, cos x. So how can you eliminate them to just have sine or cos? It doesn't seem easy. It's not like you can replace, you know, you don't want to try and replace cos x by the square root of 1 minus sine squared. That's just going to involve square roots as well as squares. And you've still got a cos x over here as well. So um, we need a different strategy. and. You know, sometimes you just have to play around with these equations and, and hope something kind of comes about. And it will if you actually factorise both sides as much as possible. So if I take the sine x out of the left-hand side, this is what I'll get. Sine x, 3 sine x, plus 2. And if I take out a common factor of 3 cos x, that's the most I can take out on the right-hand side, then I'll be left with 2 plus 3 sine x, and suddenly things start falling into place because I've actually got a common factor here and here. So if I minus them, I'll end up with, I'm going to do this slowly, I'll end up with sine x, and then this thing in a bracket, I'm not actually going to write all of that out, minus 3 cos x, this thing in a bracket and that now equals zero and what I can do is because I've got this common factor bracket I can actually bring it together into a double bracket it's going to be sine x minus 3 cos x and then that that bracket that I had 2 plus 3 sine x equals zero and I've managed to factorize it into a double bracket maybe you managed to do that another way um, Suppose you could replace sine x by, say, a and cos x by b, and you might be able to see it a bit more easily. But anyway, you have to somehow get to this. And once you're there, you know, you're nearly, well, I say you're nearly there. There's a, still a fair bit to do. But like we've done, we've done the, the hardest bit, I think, because now we can just say that either sine x uh, equals 3 cos x, and therefore sine x over cos x or tan x equals 3 and that's going to be one of my solutions or 3 sine x equals minus 2 so sine x is equal to minus 2 thirds now I've dealt with this bit this is all good but I've, I need to find tan x over here and there's, there's two ways you can do this, I think, um, using first year A-level maths. There's actually more ways with, with, with second. So I'm going to talk it through two different ways. We want to get tan x from sin x. Now we need to be careful, actually. So I'm just going to, um, we're interested, we're interested in angles between minus 90 and 90. So actually, sine x looks like this. And I'm going to get, um, it's going to be down here. Now, if you think about what tan x looks like in this region, it actually looks like, uh, it goes to infinity at 90. So it's going to look like this. And essentially, I know that I'm going to get tan x equals a negative. That's, that's going to be important. Tan x negative. We'll come back to that. Just because sine x is negative, and I can see they're both they're both negative, and when um, in this region here. So next thing, I'm going to actually work out what sine squared x is. This is method one. Sine squared x is going to equal four over nine, and from that I can get cos squared x because cos squared x is then going to be one minus sine squared x, so it's one minus four over nine. And it's going to be 5 over 9. Okay, and therefore tan squared x is going to be sine squared x over cos squared x. It's 4 over 9 all over 5 over 9, which is 4 over 9 times 9 over 5. These cancel, and I'm left with 4 over 5. This leaves me finally with tan x equals the plus or minus the square root of 4 over 5, which is plus or minus 2 over root 5. 
Um, I just got to remember what I said at the start. Tan x is actually negative. So reject the positive. So my other solution is tan x equals minus 2 over root 5. Okay, we've got our two solutions and we're done. Just going to talk through a second method. This is a solid method for sure. My second method is a little bit quicker, but it's a little bit more difficult to understand. I could draw a right angle triangle to help me using the second method. Now, actually, it's a little bit odd because we already know that we don't have a we know that the angle is not going to be uh, acute, it's going to be negative, but we can still use it to help us. We're going to take the sine x equals minus two thirds, but we're just going to forget about the minus bit. So we've got two thirds. So let's call this x, and therefore we've got two here and three here. Now I can work out the adjacent by doing three squared minus two squared square rooted, and that's going to be root five. And from this, I can directly see that tan x is equal to 2 over root 5. I've just got to remember that actually it wasn't an acute angle. It was an obtuse angle. So basically, at this point, you, you have plus or minus 2 root 5. Um, you know, you've just got to think about whether the angle is acute reflex or actually, in this case, negative. And so I would actually just alter this because I know that tan x is negative. It's going to be minus 2 root 5. Now, that's a bit more of a hand where, you know, I can use the acute idea to get me the answer. It's a little bit obvious, less obvious to see why, but it does work and it will always work. You can use a right angle triangle to help you out. If you're less happy with that, then fine, stick to this method, which is also very robust.